This is a weird video for me to make. I mean, selling plans is part of my business. But another part of my business is telling the truth. And the truth is, a lot of woodworkers are way too dependent on plans. I know some woodworkers who only build stuff from plans, and that really limits your growth as a woodworker. I mean, you really should be able to design your own stuff, or for simple builds, even design as you build. My blacksmithing club asked me to make a donation box for events and demonstrations. We're a not-for-profit, so donations help keep us going. The club asked for something simple, but also something that would look traditional. Now, for most projects, I would work with my designer, Lucas, and we'd make a 3D digital model of the project and then turn that into 2D construction drawings, like we did for this tool tote. But this is a box with a lid. I really shouldn't need digital plans to make something like this. And neither should you. And here's the finished box. I didn't have any plans, and I didn't really know what it was gonna look like, but it still came out great. Here's how I did it. I started by making this simple drawing, and I cannot draw, so don't let that stop you. You can see I wanted some sort of decorative detail here, but I didn't know what, so I just kind of faked it. What I need to do is get from this drawing over to my cut list. I'm going to do a full-size drawing right on my workbench. My stock is five and a half inches wide, so I'll make that the width of the sides. I'll run a vertical line, and that's the back. I know I want a sloped lid, so I'll find an angle that just looks good and lock my bevel gauge. I want all the parts to have the correct thickness, so I trace a piece of stock for the lid, then I find my final length for the back, adjust the line, and draw in the thickness. I'm not even using a ruler, just a scrap of wood. From this basic sketch, I can measure all my components. My back is 14 inches long, the lid is seven inches long with some overhang. In a few minutes, I'll have a complete cut list. Over at the saw bench, I can use my list to cut out all my parts at the same time. My sides are angled on top, and I'm gonna cut those angles now with a fast handsaw. In a few minutes, all my parts are done. Now. I'm going to put those rough cut parts together and see if this thing even makes sense. You can see that the lid is gonna be a glue up of two pieces. I've left extra length on the sides for that detail that I still haven't figured out, and you can see me tracing imaginary shapes and mumbling to myself like an idiot. Don't pretend you don't do it. Some of my pieces need to be trimmed square, and I'm going to use my Compass Rose Sawyer's hooks as a fast shooting board. The first batch of these sold out pretty quick, but they're back in stock, and you can pick them up at compassrosetools.com. Everything gets a quick planing, mostly to take off milling marks, but some of the pieces have flaws. This piece is cupped, and that's bad when you're making a box. It's just a few strokes near each edge, and that cup is gone. My two sides need to be identical, so I use a squeeze clamp to hold them together drop them in my vise, and then nip off the far corner. That way, I can plane straight across that end grain with no danger of breaking out. I do the same thing for the angled ends, and I'm really picky about them being straight and square. The lid is going to sit on these surfaces, and any flaws are gonna be really obvious. But these ends are perfect, and I can set them aside. Let's look at the finished piece and talk about grain direction, because you've got to think about that while you're building. If I've got kind of a square or rectangular front like this, I really like to see horizontal grain. I think it looks better. And then as this lid is opening and closing, it's going to smack into this rim here. If this was end grain, it would splinter over time. Side grain is going to be a lot more durable. Since I've gone with horizontal grain here, I want to continue horizontal grain on the lid. That ties the whole piece together really nicely. And I'm going with nailed construction here, which could look thick and chunky, like boards just kind of stuck together. So I've done a rabbit on the edge of this front piece that lets it sink back into the assembly and gives the whole thing a slimmer look. And let's cut that rabbit right now. I need to set my filister plane to the depth of my stock, and I'm running cross grain, which is the most demanding cut. So I practice on scrap, and it's a good thing I did, because this cut splintered like crazy. My plane was not set up correctly, and it needed several tweaks. When I do the actual cut, I draw the plane back a few times so that the knicker scores the shoulder, and I don't get that terrible splintering. I did break out a little on the end, but 
I can fix that. The joint itself is clean. The other side goes even better, and I've got both rabbits done. Now's a good time to glue up the top, and it only takes one clamp. I keep the glue light and wipe off the squeeze out so it dries fast. I need this piece later today, so I can't wait overnight. Now that I have a basic idea of where the whole project is going, now's a really good time to think about design and details. For this stuff, I always like to look at traditional pieces. And I was thinking a lot about shaker candle boxes and Pennsylvania wall boxes. These are two simple traditions that still had really beautiful furniture. And instead of having carvings or inlay or stuff like that, they got their details from having lovely shapes cut into the wood, usually with a turning saw. So you can see I went to those candle boxes and Pennsylvania boxes and I took this arc for the top here with a nice little shoulder. And then for the side that I wasn't sure about, I picked a double OG. It's a classical shape. You see it in lots of old furniture. And I even snuck a little Cupid's bow in down here. You can't see it in this shot, but we'll get to it in just a second. I'm starting with that simple arc on top, and I just traced a roll of tape to make it. I used my square to make a couple of little shoulders, and then I traced my oil can to make smooth arcs down to the edge. For the bottom of the board, I picked a simple Cupid's bow design, and I drew it by tracing more random stuff from around the shop. But as soon as it was done, I realized it was pointing in the wrong direction, so I erased it and did it again pointing down. I like this way better. For the sides, I picked a classical shape called a double Roman OG. It's just two curves with a little shoulder in the middle. You can see I practiced drawing it on scrap, and now I'm copying it to the real piece. I even used a compass. These details are easy to cut out with a turning saw and a back saw. Of course, you can use a band saw if you want. I saw outside my lines and then clean up with rasps, files, and a spoke shave anywhere it will fit. The spoke shave goes fast and leaves a clean surface because it slices the grain. My favorite trick for finishing off inside curves is to wrap sandpaper around a spray can. It's easy to handle and leaves a great finish. The sides are just as simple. I saw out the two curves and my turning saw even cuts right through that knot without splintering. I took my time cleaning up the first cut and then traced it to make the second side. That way, they're identical. All the parts are cut, and I'm ready to assemble. Now, one challenge with this design is that I've got these two sides and these sloped edges up here, and these need to come out perfectly parallel so that when the lid closes, it sits nice and even. If I've got any misalignment between these two sides, it'll be really obvious and make the piece look bad. And it's a little bit difficult to get them lined up perfectly because I'm gonna nail them in from the back. That makes it hard to keep them in the same position, but I've got an easy way to do the assembly that's gonna make sure we get perfect results. I'll drop one of my sides into the vise and level it up with a piece of scrap. This way, I can add a little glue, position the back, and nail through the back into the side. That's easy. Now, I've got my second side in position, and I used a little glue, but I didn't nail it, because it would probably move. So, I'm going to position my front and nail that in place. This is cross grain, so no glue. My second side is held in place by the front, and it's not going to shift as I nail it in from the back. Now, the basic box is done. To make the bottom, I just plane a little piece of stock until it fits snug, but not super tight. Then, I use my square to find the edge and drive a couple of nails to hold the bottom in place. Now I need to make the top, which is hilariously oversized in this shot. I plane in a little angle so it sits against the back, and cut off the extra stock. And now I'm going to do my favorite thumbnail molding to dress it up a little bit. I've got my philister plane set to make a shallow rabbit, and I'm growing cross grain here. So I'll draw the plane back several times to let the knicker score that grain. And I want to be extra sure I get a clean cut, so I'm going to deepen that line with a knife. I keep the pressure even as I work the plane, and I get a clean edge. Then I work the other side, and then the front. And when I've got that rabbit all around, I use a smoothing plane to turn that edge into a roundover. For the whole molding, I work the cross grain ends 
first because I might get a little breakout. By doing the long grain and last, I plane off any damage and I get a clean result. Once the top is done, the rest is just details. I need a bill slot in the lid so people can actually put money in this thing. It's just a couple of holes and I take out the waste with a turning saw and a chisel. I saw a chunk off the lid and nail that to the sides. This gives me a place to put the hinges and I'm concerned that the lid will cup over time. So I plane down some thin stock and nail a pair of battens to the edges of the lid and these should keep the lid flat even if it's outside. Then I just install the hinges and this box is done. Obviously, I was kind of winging it with this build, but you know, you can't argue with the results. It looks nice, the lid opens and closes smoothly. It's, it's a good project, even though I barely had a plan going into it. Oh, you might notice there's no lock on it. The guys in the club said we don't need one. It's not, not my business to argue with these things. They asked for a box, I built a box. They asked for a simple box. I think I might have missed the mark on simple. Oh, here's that, uh, here's that little Cupid's bow design. That's definitely not what they had in mind. But I showed it to all the guys last night and they really seemed to like it. This is usually the point in the video where I would say, hey, don't forget to pick up the plans. But of course, there are no plans for this project because that would make me a massive hypocrite. I want you to start designing and building your own projects. And I swear, it's not as difficult as it sounds. You can do a little sketch, and if it's a small project, you can freestyle it. Make it up as you go. See what happens. Maybe the first couple won't be good, but designing your own stuff and designing as you work is a skill that you can pick up. And there are great books on the topic, like By Hand and Eye, that's put out by Lost Art Press. I learned a lot about design from that book. And some people might say, Rex, this video still seems weird. I mean, you're telling people that plans aren't necessary, but you hustle plans on this channel all the time. It's true, we sell plans a lot because we're an unsponsored channel and the money has to come from somewhere, but most of our plans are shop projects. We mostly have plans for workbenches, saw benches, uh, we've got a good shave horse design, things to get you up and running, things for beginners who can't build something off the top of their head, people who don't have like a big design vocabulary to draw on. We have some furniture projects, but not a lot because I've always wanted my viewers to design their own furniture or look around you in your community and see the old traditional furniture that's near you and copy some of that stuff. That's way better than getting plans from some idiot on YouTube. Um, if you'd like more support when you're doing plans like this, consider becoming a patron. We have an amazing discussion forum on Patreon with a couple thousand members. It's super active. People support each other. There are very knowledgeable woodworkers on there, woodworkers that are a lot better than I am, frankly, and they give great advice and help and support each other. Also, if you do need some plans, they're all free. So go on over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger and check out all those rewards we have and the rich community that's helping people develop. Anyway, this project was a ton of fun and we're gonna do something else super fun next week. I hope you'll join us. Thanks for watching.